Um, so, for example, in Mozambique, in one of our uh, recent past agriculture projects, we discovered that overall our women entrepreneurs were increasing their income. But when we disaggregated by gender, we discovered that uh, they were increasing their income at lower levels compared to male entrepreneurs in the same project. So this sort of prompting has led us to not only explore, but also invest in understanding any gender gaps in our programming. But in addition to our quantitative measures, we have also started seriously investing in participatory monitoring and evaluation approaches as an organization about three years ago. So this was prompted by the policy that Liz mentioned before, the Strong Gender Equity and Social Inclusion Policy, IDE has, which requires us to explore this, um, which has been a, a wonderful and eye-opening mandate for us. So these approaches actively involve stakeholders, including the household members that are affected by our interventions in our monitoring and evaluation activities, and in particular, the analysis stage. So rather than me at my desk, who is far away from the research, we lean into the biases of those with lived experiences in those communities where we work. And in turn, they can help us identify potential unintended consequences and hopefully early on. So these methods usually are open-ended qualitative data methods, and that allows for people to talk outside the constraints of, say, a multiple choice questionnaire. So we're also more likely to capture information about outcomes and their causes that we may have never contemplated when we first set up a project or program. So for the outcomes that are beneficial, because some unintended consequences can, of course, be positive, those interventions can be deliberately invested in and expanded, and the negative consequences can be mitigated. But these participatory approaches also foster trust in, in the relationships between the IDE staff that are working with those communities and the community members who feel like they have some power over the data that's being gathered and the analysis being done. So that helps create transparency and accountability and then we hope that these stakeholders will feel empowered to raise concerns with our staff throughout the project lifestyle. And then lastly, on the Merle side, we started investing formally in learning activities as a part of our monitoring and evaluation approaches a little over a year ago. So while we were doing it, we've been setting up more formal processes that everyone at the organization can use and to ensure that the results and lessons learned we discover along the way are intentionally applied to course correct during active projects, and then also a system um, that they can be applied in future project proposals. Thank you.